Rob, uh, I'm trying to get my daughters involved in the show, and I asked each of them what their best joke was. Oh, all right. First girl had to think about it for a while. She'll get back to me. <laughs> okay. Second one said, do you know the one about the bull and how you stop him from charging? And I said, oh, yeah, you take away his credit card. And she said, yeah, that's it. But you shouldn't do that because then he'll attack you because he's mad his credit card. <laughs> and I don't know logical. if she thought she was continuing the joke or whether that was just what having kids is like, bro. Just one long joke. Oh, Alan, you know, it's hard to believe she's 24. <laughs> they grow up so fast. <laughs> it's time. Time. For a thrilling story of romance, adventure, mystery, anything with an expired copyright, it's time for another Interrupted Tale. Hello and welcome to the show that usually ends another episode of Interrupted Tales, the podcast where my friend and I take turns reading stories to you, the listener. While the other person constantly interrupts. As always, I am Rob, and I'm joined tonight by the 2021 to my 2020, Alan. How are you, Alan? Um, 20, uh, no. We did this last year, didn't we? I don't, I don't have know. a good joke for for that <laughs> one either. Uh. You think I can remember last year after 2020? 2020 had a good joke for us, though. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we have a fitting entry into uh, the year of our Lord 2021 uh, as a new year has begat a new round of public domain stories. Yeah, this uh, we got a, a hot one from yeah. 1925 and not just 1925, Rob, mm -hmm. but December 1925. <laughs> this pulp mag just got its papers. We're talking barely <laughs> legal pulp stories. This is primo stuff. Yeah, that's, I feel very sleazy, <laughs> very sleazy continuing this show now. Well, it's, uh, it's a little tale of chilling horror, The Hour of Death by Grover Brinkman. So just, uh, just one hour then. <laughs> Just I mean, the it's, hour. That's it's a continuous, but, but one hour. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Yeah, we ask you to get into your seats 10 minutes before the hour of death starts. We cannot give you refunds no. if someone is in the bathroom and you only get 55 minutes yeah. of death. Oh, no, no, no. They close the doors. They're locked. Yeah. You don't get seated until no. there's only 45 minutes left of death. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's it. Why would you even bother? No, everything good happens in the first 15. Yeah. It's like, like a... Uh... Like a Gerard Butler movie. <laughs> I think what you're thinking of is the last 15 minutes where the credits play a big role, Rob. Oh. Yeah. Taking him to task. Uh, well, this this little story, do, you, do we know anything about Grover Brinkman? Yes. Yes? Is it mostly about his ship? I was going to say he's a Muppet that invented grills. <laughs> and I think we'll just stick with that and... and... Put it out on the internet. See how it goes. Let's see how if anyone runs with it. Yeah. Uh, this story is from Weird Tales, and again, it's from December of 1925. So, uh, everybody, I hope you'll uh, take a quick drink of laud laudanum. Yeah, sure, laudanum. I don't know that you like guzzle it. Oh, do you take a sip? It's more of a sipping thing, right? Yeah, you got to hold your pinky out. <laughs> well, reread you this week's tale the telephone on dr thorndyke's littered desk shrieked a single jerked out ring as if the party on the other end of the line was nervous for a connection to be made a lot harder to claim a butt dial in 1925 rob this <laughs> I mean, you could maybe get two or three accidental rotary digits in there, but, uh, oh, I, um, I must have brushed up against it with my crotch and my 
penis in its completely normal flaccid state, but it must have just sort of slotted into the rotating disc with enough force to accidentally hit the combination of digits. That is your 10-digit long-distance number. Uh, <laughs> They didn't even have long distance, Alan. You'd have to train your junk to actually tell the operator who you want to call. That's a lot harder, calling up uh, drunk and lonely and having to connect through a switchboard <laughs> operator. I'm I'm sorry, sir. I, I couldn't understand you. Could you repeat that, please? I, 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 uh, I want to call Denise. Where's Denise? Sir, I'm sorry you'll have to vacate the line. I'm in a very small town, and there's a UFO that will not be explained at the end of the movie. Oh, it's still pretty good. It's all right. I it's mean, it's, right. you know, yeah. B+. It's stylish, yeah. Yeah, I like the look and the feel. They'll do something better next time, you know? Yeah, I yes. bet. Mm -hmm. Laying aside his book, he casually reached for the receiver. Hello, he said. Yes, this is Thorndike speaking. Who did you say? Who is this? Is this Kevin from the office? Am I being cameoed? <laughs> you are awesome, man. Hey, what happened to the chili stain from your famous chili? Like the next episode, there's no stain at all. And that stain wouldn't just go away. Uh, no, your name isn't Brian. It's Kevin. This is my cameo fantasy, Kevin. How many you think are like that? Could you imagine if you could actually pick up, uh, like, who who pays for the one where you actually have to talk to the person? Uh, well, <laughs> like, who wants that? Does he do Skype? I mean, will he will he see my cam? Because that's important. <laughs> oh well, if it's two ways, okay, yeah, I get okay. it. I get right. it. Yeah, Blake. Oh yes, I recognize your voice now, old man. Didn't at first. It seems so strained and unnatural. Like, maybe you're a ghost or a zombie or you sang too much karaoke. All frightening circumstances. <laughs> Equally frightening, yeah, really. All things that could haunt someone else for a lifetime. It's they true. could. Could be the subject of a Weird Tales story, yes. <laughs> yes. If you say it's urgent, I'll be over right away. Thorndike hung up the receiver, donned his hat and coat, and went out the front way of his bachelor apartment telling his servant he need not stay up. Uh, the life of a man <laughs> with a bachelor apartment and a servant. Oh, man. Uh, oh, no, don't wait up, uh, but make sure to leave out some cold pizza rolls in the kitchen and, you know, throw some of my clothes on the floor just in case I bring someone back. I want them to know my lifestyle. <laughs> uh, I could go for a pizza roll right now, Alan. You longing for those bachelor days? Man. Yes. Yes, yes. Mm. I was I was reading about hangovers today. Oh, okay, could, yeah, that's the best way to experience them. I could not remember the last time I had a hangover. Uh, and well, I, it's not like I don't drink. I just don't drink that much. I don't remember the getting drunk part. So it's it's crazy how that works. Oh, let me tell you about the seven stages of drinking, Alan. Can we say those on TV? <laughs> A minute later, he was speeding down the deserted street in his own roadster. Now I wonder what in the dickens is the matter? Thorndike reflected as he sped along, recalling the strained, terrified voice of his old colleague over the wire. Yes, if only there'd been a way to ascertain what the circumstances were remotely before I arrived at my destination. Can't ring, ring. think of what mechanism that might be. Wait, I'm getting another call from him. I, I better take this. You don't say. You don't say. Mm -hmm. you, you don't say. He's not that's, saying. That's the problem. He's not saying. That's, that's yeah. the whole thing. The whole thing. I got it. He was soon to find out. As he parked his car in Blake's driveway, he had a vague premonition that something was wrong. Seriously wrong. Was it the hearse? Is that what tipped you off? <laughs> Pull up to the driveway. <laughs> hmm. Can't quite put my... You know, they don't make Escalade party bus hearses, Rob. <laughs> they don't fill them with alcohol and paper sashes that say slut on them. <laughs> the priest uh, giving last rites on the deck to the guy. <clears throat> Actually, uh, they do make Escalade hearses. They do? Yeah, it's kind of a double tragedy, really. <laughs> <laughs> and if a clown died, triple. No. 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 Two and a nope. half. <laughs> Two and a half tragedies. 
A servant met him at the door of Blake's residence. Wow, these guys are swimming in servants. Hey, I'm a bachelor. How do I get to the next step? Dear Penthouse Forum. How do I break through the glass ceiling of getting a servant while still not being able to wash my own clothes because I don't know how? How do I get another mother? I mean, servant. 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 How can I pay to be my mother? I, I mean, servant. <laughs> A servant met him at the door of Blake's residence, an old, slightly bent man who led him without prelude to Blake's den, where his friend lived alone. But what a different Blake. In the strained, horror-filled face, Thorndike hardly recognized the man who, from youth and college days, he always called his closest friend. But then after college, you know, kind of gradually reduced to the status of not-too-close acquaintance you call when you think... Maybe somebody you know is a vampire, and, mm. you're, and your real friends, they're going to make fun of you for it. No. Oh, that's, that's the Everybody should have that friend, though. Yeah, right. <laughs> Alan, you're my, I think my neighbor is a vampire friend. Can't help you, Rob. <laughs> I'm allergic to not having garlic. Hmm. It's just the Italian in me. <laughs> just comes out of the pores. Yep. It's got, got to have garlic uh, all the time. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It keeps 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 them out of the neighborhood, though. I don't want any vampires in my neighborhood. You want a staked community, is what uh, you're saying, Rob? <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Blake was a strong man, both mentally and physically. His only weakness, a belief in superstition. And as Thorndike looked at this mere phantom of a, the former football star, the frown deepened on his brow. Awful, awful Scooby Doo special. Real low point for Jim Brown's career. <laughs> Jim Phantom Brown. of the former football star. <laughs> and why was Sandy Duncan in there? I still don't understand why Sandy Duncan would be in there. Why was Sandy Duncan with the Batman one? No, that was Mama Cass. What was Mama Cass doing in Scooby-Doo at all? I can't tell you. Thank God. I'm glad you came, said Blake unnaturally. It was so late when I called up that I was afraid you might have retired. No, I always stay up till after midnight, reading. Wow, I... Bet the neighbors hate him. Hey, keep it down in there. <laughs> That's what's up. Hey, keep it down in there. I'm trying to sleep. Quitting with the page turning. <laughs> I'll steal the cabs. I'll call the cabs. <laughs> oh, now you're just fucking with me. <laughs> You know, we don't have enough props on the show. <laughs> Not enough prop comedy on our audio <laughs> podcast. <laughs> now, Alan, what would happen if he was doing all of that underwater? Theater of the imagination. I mean, unless you are going to do the show underwater, in which case that would be a prop. Mm, fair point. But you look as if you've seen a ghost. What in the world is wrong? Imagine what you'd look like if a ghost had seen you think about it and upvote me i don't understand why i'm not at the top of shower thoughts i have so many shower thoughts the ghost just... could see you do you think that dan Aykroyd got to know the ghost that blew him before it blew him in ghostbusters or just showed up spectrally at his bed it clearly was a chance encounter, Rob. How can you tell? It just raises more questions than it answers. The entire film. The whole franchise, really. Well, I don't acknowledge the rest of it, Alan. Stick to the core texts. Yeah, you're an originalist. <laughs> the one movie. You're a ghost breaker. And no scenes with Rick Moranis. <laughs> <laughs> For answer, Blake pointed to a library table in the center of the room on which was a scattered pile of letters. He seemed stupefied. His eyes were glassy and wandering. Read one of those, he said queerly, and don't take it as a joke. Ah, oh, the Jimmy Fallon monologue approach. <laughs> just, just stumble your way through it, and it doesn't need to be funny. It's more like words that I'm pushing out of my mouth hole. Have you seen this? I have seen that. The, the familiarity is comforting. <laughs> What if there was just, instead of an audience, there was just one person responding in that manner? <laughs> Why, yes, 
I have seen that adverti- that advertised on television, and it seems like a foolish product. Isn't that basically the show, except for Quest Love doesn't bother to talk; he just kind of like nods. Yeah, yeah. Occasionally, yeah. like pulls the co- the uh, the pick out and it back yep. in. Yep, yep. For the last six weeks, one of these letters has been coming at one o'clock in the morning each time. It's odd, isn't insane it? Insane, solely because for postal carrier purposes. <laughs> it's uh. <laughs> Wow. It's a little, a little iffy. Okay. It's a dedicated delivery person. Yeah. Uh huh. I'm giving him five stars. I'll say fucked up that soda. <laughs> well, I'm glad they're putting tape over it now. Yeah. It makes you feel like they didn't do something to it. That's right. You know what I'm talking about. Uh-huh. Tongue in the flap. That's right. <laughs> you know they do it. I just <laughs> Oh whoops. Uh, oh my I, I brushed <laughs> I, I brushed your sprite up against my crotch. <laughs> and I'm my penis in its normal you know unaroused flaccid state accidentally popped the circle for diet Dr. Pepper. You okay, know, I, I took a shower this morning, so honestly, it's it's cleaner than my hands at this point. Oh, okay, all right. So you should be happy that's how I delivered it. And that's what I go tongue in the flap. Tongue in the flap. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the new song craze by Danny Kay. <laughs> Where does he sing this? What is this? I said, from? is uh, Ball Kelly. and the Jack from... Um, it also featured as the after-dinner song sung in the Makor 1986 movie Haunted and Honeymoon, which is certainly how I know that song. Was that Ed Bigley Jr.? No. Uh, it's Transylvania 6 5,000. That's the uh, Gilda Radner. And... I've never seen Haunted Honeymoon. I, you know what? I'm a fan of Haunted Honeymoon. All right. Where were we? Uh, the yes. ghost had seen you. Oh, no. Jimmy Fallon monologue. <laughs> okay, there we go. Thorndike, his face incredulous at the fact that he was getting mail at 1 a.m., picked up the foremost letter and unfolded the single sheet it contained. My 2014 Nissan Altima is in high demand and the car dealer wants to buy it back immediately. Wow, I thought I was lucky after that call about my warranty earlier today. Oh, it's about to expire, Rob. Get on that. Yeah, I must. Get on it. As he read, the blood slowly left his face, and laughing queerly, he read for the second time the brief note. Mr. James Blake, two more nights from tonight, at exactly one o'clock, and your life will be snuffed out like the breaking of a thread. Yours truly, the mixed metaphor killer. (laughs) It'll be cut short like Mm -hmm. a candle in the wind. No, I think someone else has used that before. I don't want to plagiarize that. I'm going to go with snuffed out like the breaking of a thread. That's (laughs) flows. Like the sands through a beat comb. Two more nights from tonight. So I just want to make clear, me, the mixed metaphor killer, I'm not including tonight as one of the two nights. I know it's a little bit confusing. I just want, I don't want, I don't want there to be a mix up. So does each night, so he's been getting these every night for the last six weeks. Is it uh-huh. counting down? Was there a three node? It's and two a, more nights. Four more so nights? So whatever night is, you get two more. Huh. I Okay, great. I'm glad you got it, right? I've, I've got it. Okay. There was no signature. Nothing at all. Nothing but that sinister message without a clue of any kind. Yeah, there's no clue at all, Rob, from this. Remarkably consistent and punctual <laughs> killer who delivers a note to this guy's house every fucking night at the exact same time. Mm-hmm. How could we begin to track it down with only two nights to spare? If only we had, you know, a certain amount of time, like more than a month, but less than two months. Or I'm going to say an open door. Like if just the door was open. Blake gave a hollow laugh. What do you make of it? He asked slowly, hopelessly. Thorndike shook his head. Then presently his face broke into the image of a smile. No doubt some friend of yours trying to put a scare into you, he said. Those voice lacked conviction. 
did you watch uh prank encounters with that kid from stranger things the chicklets chicklets yeah you know the teeth the kid with the teeth yeah sure i did not see the prank encounters <laughs> no. oh well no it's a i mean it's a slow burn i'm mm-hmm. on episode 27 and you know uh it's just the same letter as in episodes one through mm. 26 but mm-hmm. it, i hear it picks up pretty soon though yeah i've been i haven't been watching the show but i've been mm-hmm. listening to the after show podcast yeah what fantastic do you think of that? stuff i mean oh starts off a little dry but by the second week oh yeah. man you're just gonna sit there and wait for the next number to be read well i hear it's like agents of shield mm-hmm. where it starts off slow and then gradually it finally ends thank god <laughs> Thank God. I thought of that. At first, I almost believed it. But I don't anymore. Why, man, look. More than 40 of them. Every night for 40 nights at exactly one o'clock. And I haven't done shit about <laughs> I mean, everybody procrastinates, but with me, it's really an art form. <laughs> I mean, 40. I thought he'd get tired after yes. 30. I had to bring in another trash can. They're just piling up around here. How many recycling bins does he think I have? Yes, I've taught the, I've asked the servant to clean them up, but the, he, all he does is make pizza rolls. <laughs> That's it. Good pizza rolls, though. Mm, he really knows best. the art form of getting them burning hot in mm-hmm. the center, but mm-hmm. pretty cold still on the outside. <laughs> That's the trick. Thorndike was looking through the letters, trying to conjure some vague reason for their being there. Can't you get a clue from the postmarks? He asked presently. Yeah, like, this one is postmarked from the depths of hell. Uh, Do you know anybody from the depths of hell? Maybe an old pen pal? I mean, if it was me, okay, it's just if if it's me, I'd start looking through the old Rolodex just in case, and I would start on D for depths of hell. (laughs) Did you... Did you ever take a tour of Depths of Hell? You know, they they take all the email addresses from the sign-in sheet, so they may have gotten it there. And this one's on a postcard with a picture of the entrance to the Depths of Hell, and it says, Welcome to the Depths of Hell. And I'm just thinking maybe you've got some connection to the Depths of Hell, something like that. Welcome to the Depths of Hell. Here comes Satan now. Welcome to the Depths of Hell. Welcome yeah. to the House of Fun reference there. I got oh, I got it. You didn't have to tell me. That's what I call tongue in the flap. It's got nothing on Welcome to the Gates of Hell. Tongue in the flap. Which is strangely about a young man going to the gates of hell's chemist shop to uh. buy a condom. It's, I'm not sure. It seems out of his way. That seems well. You don't want anyone to see you by. Oh yeah, you don't want anybody to know you. So I guess yeah. Right. I mean, that's where you go. Mm -hmm. No use to try. Blake returned. Each is mailed within the city. They're not always at the same station, and each has a special delivery stamp attached. I bet they sell a lot of condoms at the gates of hell because everybody is about to get fucked. (laughs) Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think my pastor said that one. Hey, <laughs> the cool one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nine hundred dollars sneakers. We can't find a clue that way. No, no, not the special delivery stamp that gets the delivery mm-hmm. at a specific time in the middle of the night. Yep, got the one a.m. printed right on it. I'm pretty. That's. I'm pretty sure that's how the post office works, Rob. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you know, I think that's why they deserve those pensions. They do. It's and, true. and now I feel bad for not tipping at Christmas. I don't. I, do people still know their mail person? No, they don't. I don't know. My parents still leave like five bucks. That's almost. I've, mm, yes, mm. it's too low. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, if you're spreading that out over a year. Yeah. Well, their ooh. their defense is always, well, it's always different people. So we're just giving it to somebody. And I'm like, well. <laughs> right. Yes. So, so this is your one third of $5 yeah. spread out over 365 I, I would rather days. have $5 in McDonald's cash than somebody give me $5. <laughs> it just seems wrong. Yeah. It does enough. seem like it's worth more uh, yeah. in it, the paper. Yeah. 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 Well. 1 a.m. Yeah. 
1 a.m. I don't know. I, they don't even have that option on, on Amazon Prime. They don't have the same day overnight between 1 and 102 a.m. to scare the shit out of you and your neighbor's dogs. Like, that's not an option. <laughs> no, it should be, damn it. Suddenly, as Thorndike started to speak, the tall clock in the hallway chimed out the hour. One o'clock. Wow. Wow. We're here. With the sound. <laughs> With the sound. Blake seemed to pale even more. And wait, so why did he wait so long to call him then? Why did he call him at like seven in the morning? I told you I was planning on getting to it. And uh, I started when it got to about 18. But then on 19, I thought, well, this has got to be a joke. And then on 20, I thought, well, if it is a joke, he's really taking it too far. And then on 21, I napped for four days. <laughs> so... I think you can see that really it's probably your fault for not coming over sooner. <laughs> With the sound, Blake seemed to pale even more until his face was the color of dead ashes. Dead ashes, so mm -hmm. not those youthful and vivacious ashes that are so bad at getting jobs and moving out of their parents' homes. Oh, that's strained. Oh, oh shit, Rob, the... It's the narrator. He's the mixed metaphor killer. The color of dead ashes. We should have known. Oh, no. It's the unreliable, murderous narrator. <laughs> that old trope. <laughs> oh, Grover. Grover. <laughs> he slumped down in his chair, trembling in every limb, his eyes in a fixed stare on the doorway. Thorndike realized with a pang of regret that the sinister letters were proving too much for his old friend. Blake was a wreck, physically and mentally and to all indications on the verge of losing his mind. Buck up, old man, he said solicitously. Yeah, think about how much you have, and then round down to 23, because this one's basically wasted. <laughs> I mean, we've this one's shot. We Chuck it out the window. Let's start counting again. <laughs> but my God, Jim, almost shrieked Blake. His outward calm suddenly deserting him. Place yourself in my position. For more than 40 nights, I've stayed up and waited, waited for this. I mean, it's, this is like worse than buying an RTX 3080 level of waiting. It's not even a note under the Christmas tree that says you're getting a PS5 eventually. It's rough. It's rough. I tell you... <laughs> People waiting for the rapture are looking over at me like that poor son of a bitch. <laughs> That's how much I've been waiting <laughs> for a girl like you. Do, 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 do. You know what? You know what the world needs, Alan? A radio station to have a podcast where they, it's just about Yacht Rock. It's just about FM Gold. That's what I want. I thought you were going to say uh, a radio station where the podcast reads a couple sentences <laughs> and then breaks off into the lyrics that are part of that song. Then they play the whole song and then you come back and hear maybe a couple yeah. sentences if the two guys aren't dicking around that much. That's exactly what people want. Yeah. Oh, they love it. <laughs> and he was hot blooded. All right. We'll be back in four and a half minutes, guys. See you later. <laughs> Dice bite sized chunks, just like quibby sized chunks of content. <laughs> People are going to go crazy for it. One interruption. Show ends after one interruption. Then the next day, it's the next bit. It's perfect. Perfect. I can't sleep. All day and night, this thing haunts me like a bad dream. My mind is about ready to snap. Thank God it's almost over. Either we find out who's doing this tomorrow night, or I definitely don't find out, if you know what I mean. I, there seriously can't be any other options except die or wait or not die. I don't know what to do. He's about to snap, Rob. Like a thread at the end of its wick of a burning candle. I can't. I can't figure it out. I don't know. I'll just... I'm not going to rewrite the whole thing, and I don't have any whiteouts, so it's just, it's just I'm sending out the letter like that. He broke off abruptly. At that moment, the aged servant no noiselessly opened the door, and without further ceremony, handed Blake a letter. Special delivery letter for you, sir, he said obediently, his face an impassive mask, and turned for the door. Oh, uh, uh, was he just here? Uh, uh, could you excuse me if I just... Uh, uh, excuse me, if you, if you would just move, though. Uh, 
No, if you're just, I just I'm trying. It's, you seem to be blocking me from looking directly out the door, and we just, it, it seems nope. like we keep bu- bumping nope. into nope. each other, and I go left, side. and you go left, nope. no, and then side. I go, and if you've got very nope. limited time to catch a glimpse out the front nope. door. This and, side. Okay, no, you go, okay, you go first. Which way is the front? No, then I go, okay, no, okay, why are you coming back through the door? That's, I no. thought you wanted me to go there. Oh, my God. No, back here. Oh, just kill me. Blake turned the letter over in his hands like a man in a daze. Yeah, he also could just ask the guy, hey, who's been bringing me these letters? Uh, the post office robbed. Don't you know how letters work? <laughs> <laughs> Without opening it, he handed it to Thorndyke. You read it, he requested, and buried his face in his hands. Thorndyke took it without a word of protest and tore it open. This time, the message was even more brief. 24 more hours, and then the breaking of the thread. Breaking of the... Okay, okay, all right. What what if it's all a misunderstanding, Mm -hmm. and he's just a really bad typist, Mm -hmm. and probably means breaking of the bread? All right. All so right. let's just okay. We'll we'll do a little thing. We'll we'll substitute a B okay for each of the ths, and okay. now it reads twenty four more hours, mm-hmm. and Ben be breaking of be bread. Okay. So uh, okay. All right. Now we're getting somewhere. Did you happen to invite somebody named Ben to dinner and forget about it, despite him reminding you thirty nine times in a row? Is that what happened? I don't know. Do we take a chance? Maybe it, it's just a typo or I don't know. Oh, you mean Ben from the gym. Oh, oh. no. We said we were going to have dinner 43 nights from now. I don't. <laughs> that can't be him. <laughs> As he put the letter on the table, the expression of Thorndyke's face suddenly changed. His countenance hardened. His lips drew into a thin line that barely showed the whiteness of his teeth and his eyes seem to be visioning something far away. What a shocking change. It's like you've seen two ghosts. Two? Playing ping pong. Uh-huh. I'm not good at reading expressions. Maybe you're just constipated. Is that is that the problem here? <laughs> it seems like you're grimacing more than... Are, are your eyeballs supposed to be rolling back that far into your head? Is that don't do the yandere normal. face for me, please. Though that's <laughs> not. I don't want to see that. Nobody. Wait, is that what? It's not yandere. What is the? It's uh, uh, what is it? The Twitch guy? No, not PogChamp. Oh, uh, I thought you were talking about PogChamp. Uh, hold on. The uh, I go. I sorry. Thank God I don't know how to pronounce this. Yeah. I mean, I may know what it is, but I don't know how to pronounce this, so I'm not that fucked up. I, Ahegao face? Oh, yes. Okay. I've never heard anyone say it. I know what that is. Yeah. Oh, God. Hey, I don't know how to pronounce it, Internet. Uh, <laughs> I think that shows how morally upright I am. That's right. And, and the fact that I've seen it written down certainly doesn't mean anything ever. <laughs> well, no, that's that's just part of the literature. Yes. When you know sure. the Internet like gentlemen do. Yeah. Blake, he said determinedly. We're going to find out who is doing this, and don't think about tomorrow night. Have you any idea what the motive of sending these crazy letters could be? Yes, well, I'm I'm hoping sexual, but I've <laughs> never had my thread broken before. What's our safe word going to be? Candle. Candle? No, no, no. That might get confusing later. Uh... No, my safe word is always Omaha, Omaha, Omaha. Well, now you're never going to get to fuck Peyton Manning. What kind of, what are you thinking of? <laughs> no. <laughs> Bad choice. <laughs> Listen, that's, I did it as a precaution so that it would never happen, Alan. No, I haven't, said Blake hopelessly. I'm pretty well provided for financially, but not rich. It's not a scheme to blackmail me for money. I'm sure of that. Yeah, the not asking me for money part of the notes really hints strongly at that part. I mean, I'm like servant rich, but not like rich rich. Yeah, they definitely make those distinctions when the uh, when the old black me. I don't know what's the nickname for the guillotine. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, I don't know. 
What's the old Sparky equivalent for a guillotine? Um, or Louison, or later nicknamed La Vouve, the Widow, La Glaive de la Liberté, uh, yeah. the Sword of Freedom, or La, so la Rassoir Nationale, the National Razor. Wow. Ooh. Ooh. I like that. The National Razor. Yeah, when people get out the old national razor, they don't they don't make too many distinctions between servant rich and rich rich. <laughs> they let that old la glaive de la liberté fly. Slice them all. Yeah, and uh, let the basket sort them out. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know of any enemies here in New York. He is not a real New Yorker then. <laughs> Number one. Pigeons. Oh. Number two, people trying to make me call the Dwayne Reedy Walgreens. I ain't going to do that. Number three, every other city in the fucking world. Oh, you think Philadelphia is going to send me letters at 1 a.m.? Philadelphia? They'd have to learn to write first. Oh, <laughs> how about your servant? <laughs> Suddenly asked Thorndike. Blake laughed. We're very proud of our literacy. <laughs> Yay. Queens, number one in adult literacy. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's the, that's that's the slogan. The motto. That's what you see on the postcards. <laughs> Just like the gates now. Queens, right there, there's the sign. Number one in literacy. <laughs> and Spider-Man's, number one in literacy and Spider-Man. Yes, uh, yep, yep. Combine the two of them and we're number one. Oh. That's Spider-Man. I saw him reading once. So, you know, it's all true. Uh, how about your servant? Suddenly asked Thorndike. Blake laughed. Nothing suspicious about him. I've had him for the last ten years. Never a problem. Even after I slept with his fiance uh, five weeks ago. <laughs> five weeks? Was it? Six weeks, I don't... Oh, I remember it was the day when I forced him to give up his dog and cut his pay in half, which was a busy day. No, he hasn't mouthed a word of it. I... He thinks the letters are from my factory superintendent out of town. A daily report of the work. Ah, daily report number 39. <laughs> Mr. Blake, as per usual, nothing to report as... The day just started a few minutes ago, and of course the factory is closed because it is midnight. But once again, I urge you to reconsider the time I write these reports. Perhaps after the majority of the events of the day have already transpired. Perhaps the evening before the day ends. Yours truly, Superintendent Out of Town. P.S. You have two days left to live. <laughs> Shit! He was the murderer the whole time! <laughs> Oh, I should have read both sides of the note. He wasn't going to murder, but he just had so much free time, and he's working the night shift. I mean, frankly, I mean, the guy's fear alone was egging him on. He's like, wait a minute, should I really do this? I'm not up for that promotion. What is this job? Well, he's got a factory, Rob. We all have factories, right? Sure. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i not rich, rich. I'm, just, I'm factory rich. All right, said Thorndike. I suppose in that case, you can trust him. I think I'll be going now. There's nothing to be gained by you sitting up and racking your brain about it. No. And, uh, um, <laughs> no, I know you're concerned about it, but also I've got to rush home. I've got last night's episode of Mass Singer DVR'd. And I, yeah, I know it's DVR'd, but they put the spoiler images right in the Apple news feeds these days. You can't, you don't even have a day to watch it. No, oh, I, I found out about that baby Yoda hours before I could watch it. It's bullshit. Yeah. Got to do something about it. You go to bed and sleep and forget all about this. I'll come tomorrow night before one o'clock, maybe five, <laughs> ten minutes, and we'll see what Dude, happens. No, no, yeah, I, before 1 a.m., sure. I mean, give or take. I mean, traffic's <laughs> iffy at that time of night. I mean, it, okay, you just get ready, and if it looks like I'm running late, I'll give you a call, okay? Yeah. 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 Don't, don't worry about it. Or a text. I'll at least text, okay, when I'm on my way. I'm going to let my penis close to the dial and... <laughs> Probably, if something happens, you'll know about it. Okay, so, all right, so let's get into this, then. This is not the first well, time no, it's I come don't. up. Okay. Please, unravel the thread, Rob. How, what percentage of touch tone, 
uh-huh. or what are the other ones called? Rotary dial phones. Yes. What percentage of them do you think over time, over time, had a penis on them? Well, I mean, for the one, like the ones that are wall mounted with the with the individual hang. Well, that's gonna that's gonna drive the percentage down. I understand. Yeah, well, I mean, I, that would take some effort. Yeah, I mean, you got to be committed. Well, no, you got the earpiece. You pull the earpiece down. That thing can go no. anywhere. Wow. I just think it's a lot more than people would think or be comfortable with. I've got the time. Give me the temperature. What? Never called up time and temperature, Rob? Oh, my God. I was trying to explain to one of my kids <laughs> about how they were people like, used to have to they call. They were like number three on my speed dial. Yeah. People used to have to call for the weather. <laughs> and he was like, what the hell are you talking about, man? He did not. Oh, I've never felt older. I've never felt younger and more connected to people by text. You wouldn't believe how many DoorDash drivers I have personally texting me. <laughs> it's like I've got a whole new class of friends. Leaving a sleeping potion, he left. Is he a doctor? Yeah, I think he's a doctor. Okay. But also, I mean, <laughs> sure. I don't think they call it sleep. I mean, <laughs> if a doctor is like, here... He's a sleeping coach. <laughs> Go see You're like, doctor. okay, wait a minute now. <laughs> but w- what level mage are you that? Because I don't think that's what they call Ambien. That's not that's not the, the medical name for it. Well, if you don't like taking pills, you have someone come out and surprise you and blow it into your face like a wizard. Leaving a sleeping potion, he left, advising the old servant to see that Blake had every care. All that day, Thorndyke thought about the coming night. While keeping a respectful and safe distance from his friend. <laughs> Don't want to impose. Let's see. He's got 24 hours uh, to live. All right. I guess I could fit in a full night's sleep and a uh, work day. And uh... no, he's probably going to sleep it off. So I don't want to, you know, I don't want to bother him. No, why would you? He might sleep through the whole thing. I mean, it's, it's his last 24 hours. Why would you take any of that away from him? <laughs> right. It's really for the other guy's care. Well, that's why I gave him the sleeping potion, so he'd skip past the the glorious sunrise one last time. That's not worth it. Toward evening, he had a visitor in the form of Inspector Carson, who, though ten years his senior, was one of his closest friends, and also an intimate friend of Blake's. Wait, okay, wait. (laughs) Inspector. So, uh, Thorndike Uh and Blake are both good friends with an inspector, but Blake is like, okay, I'll phone a friend buck up bachelor instead of like the police detective an intimate friend at that right and he didn't call the cops until the last day so it's a, sn- it's a snob yeah. is what you're saying i mean <laughs> you find out later that your friend's getting murdered and you're like well hey i thought you'd invite me to the murder murders murder investigation is kind of my deal and you're like well no but i mean you do murder investigations all the time so we thought it would bore you you know we didn't We didn't want to impose. Well, plus, we didn't really know if this was in your wheelhouse because it hasn't happened yet. Right. And you're only used to the murders that have been already murdered. So Yeah, this is more um, of a pre-murder situation. mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you get it. You get it. He gets it. Acting on an impulse, he told Carson all about the threats Blake had received, (laughs) his condition, and asked him to go along that night. Carson accepted, and he promised to call for him at midnight. (laughs) <laughs> uh so first thing's gonna pick him up at midnight not even get there say our close friend is going to be murdered at 1 a.m yeah no no we should definitely catch up ahead of time i think it's 12 30 i mean we're gonna run out of small talk after what like 10 minutes and then it's gonna be all murder talk oh. and he never puts out snacks oh forget so. it the guy deserves it at 11 o'clock that night thorndike had a call One of his convalescing suburban patients had grown suddenly worse. They asked him to come immediately. That's why I'm so into punk. I'm not going to be like one of those convalescing suburban patients like you, Mom. (laughs) I'm going to name my band convalescing suburban patients. That'll show them. What's a soup dragon, (laughs) Ross? Is it a dragon made out of soup? (laughs) No, it's a dragon that delivers soup throughout the land. Oh, yeah. No, I love Soup Dragon, but um, 
if you don't get the fresh baked bread, then it's not really worth it just for the soup. After telephoning Carson, telling him he might be a few minutes late, Thorndyke left without delay. Although he worked with all possible haste over his patient and left the sick room as soon as he dared, it was 15 minutes of one when he drew up in front oh, of Carson's apartment. <laughs> oh, no, I'm, I'm so sorry I was late. I was just in surgery and I was trying to put in, I mean, put, put in a pacemaker and I uh, shanked it with my scalpel and then it got lost in, in the brush. I mean, uh, blood, I mean, uh, I don't know why I'm stumbling over my way. I'll just say the procedure wasn't quite a part. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Jokes. Dr. Jokes. They like to play golf and sleep with nurses. Well, well it's, it's 1925, Alan. That's what's going down. Yeah, now they get to sleep with doctors. <laughs> That's right. Doctors sleeping with doctors. What a world. That's hot, said Michael Crichton. We'll have to hurry. He said nervously as Carson took his seat beside him. I'm sure the letters and threats are fake, but nevertheless, I'd like to be there a minute before one o'clock. <laughs> uh, right on time. And of course, after my nurse takes Blake's blood pressure and his insurance information, you know, if it changes, then we've got to know. And I'll see him promptly at 155. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Nope. He's got to do the temperature. And then the COVID quick test. So that's going to add a good 45, no, 50 minutes. I'm sorry. My last one ran over. You're going to have to reschedule. <laughs> Blake's the next thing to being insane now. And you can't tell me what some little scare might do. It was only a few minutes later that they slowed up for Blake's residence. As they turned into the dark driveway that wound serpent-like to the house situated far back from the street, Carson suddenly gave a warning cry as a fleeing figure jumped directly into the path of the car. Like a moth to the flames of the car's engines, pistons exploding, or maybe I should write headlights. No, that's not elegant enough. Thorndyke jammed on the brakes, but it was too late to avoid striking the man, said the rich doctor's lawyer to the press <laughs> on multiple <laughs> occasions. Just ran right out. To I've got a prepared statement. <clears throat> and it is, but it was too late to avoid striking the man. Oh, he's a rich doctor. I don't see any reason not to believe him. With a sickening sensation in the pit of his stomach, he climbed out of the machine. Carson was already bending over the prostate for prostrate form. <laughs> prostate form. Well, his... Wow, they did hit him hard. Oof. Oof, that knocked it right out. Oof. Carson was already bending over the prostrate form, and it was with a profound shock that he recognized the bent form as that of Blake's servant. Rob, not since the shock have I been <laughs> less shocked by a shock. I was more shocked by the happenings in the happening than this thing that happened. I was more untouched by the untouchables. <laughs> oh, you could not have not been touched any more <laughs> or less. I'm not sure, but something like that just wasn't possible. Nope. It was obvious that the man's condition was critical, though he still retained consciousness. And as he bent over him, Thorndyke saw the pale lips move as if he wanted to speak. A sip of brandy from his first aid kit seemed to revive him for a moment, and he began to talk. <laughs> yeah, this is the old folk remedy for car bumper-induced hypothermia. <laughs> Strub this on it. Well, shouldn't I, shouldn't I drink it? I, I, I feel so thirsty. No, no, rub it where the bumper hits you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Put pressure on it and uh, drink this quickly. And this one's for me. I carry a second one, <laughs> just in case. Listen, he began brokenly, just above a whisper. I'm about gone. So it'll just be just as well if I tell you something. He stopped for a minute, as if gathering strength to go on. Then... I was the one who wrote those letters to... Wrote those letters. To Blake. To Blake, yeah. Nope, we figured... Yeah. I... Yeah. Wanted to make him suffer. Make him suffer. Yeah, we, we got that. <laughs> and by proxy, you, the audience. <laughs> Fuck these fuckers. <laughs> Years ago, Blake was the cause of my daughter's disgrace. I promised her I would make him pay, and I did. He's been in hell for the last six weeks. Just like I was for ten years. 
sense. He made my daughter a disgrace. And wow, I'm not good at math. I did not do the conversion correctly. Years. This guy stayed in his employ. It is a tough job market in 1925. This was before the crash. Oh, I see. It's ten years, and he saved up six weeks of agony. Oh, uh, for, that's you got it. That's his boss. I mean, thank God they had rollover. You know, carryover. Oh yeah. Oh next. no. I mean, if you only have forty hours yeah. of agony, then it's never going to be enough. No. I never intended to kill him. Wanted to make him suffer. Better go up to the house. Uh. The voice ceased. The aged servants lapsed into unconsciousness. Shuddering slightly, Thorndyke gently laid back the tussled head and, with Carson at his side, started for the house. Mm -hmm. As he pushed open the front door, the clock in the hallway struck the hour. One o'clock. God, I could have sworn it was like three or four by the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so wow. how early did he come out? I don't know. You know what? what? The irony is he could have just written a letter. <laughs> Fooled you. The deep chime seemed to send an icy shiver through his body, and he saw that Carson was pale also. With the chime also was a sound that he could not fathom, something like a low, deep moan. I think he did it. I think he reached full fathoming wow. there, Rob. <laughs> that, is, that is full fathoming and no mixed metaphors. That's pretty much what it was. Just a description of... Something like something else. All right. Can't tell what it is, but it sounds exactly like a low, deep moan. <laughs> the next moment, he pushed open the library door, Carson at his back. Thorndike gave a gasp at what he saw, and he felt the blood suddenly chill in his veins. Blake was crumpled in a heap on the floor, where he had fallen face forward out of his chair. Mm, you face forward, you say? Mm-hmm. He fell forward from the chair. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't... Forward. Riker it, you're saying. No, nope, didn't appear to be doing that. No, nope. wasn't a cool teach breaking it down for you for a moment. No, nope, didn't uh, didn't seem to turn his baseball cap and chair around and uh, rap with him for a while. So he was kind of just normal chairing it. Mm -hmm. Just chairing it uh, at, a, at a desk, oddly enough, uh, mm -hmm. until he fell forward. Yep. Fell forward out of the chair. Yep. Uh, unusually. Yep. Heap on the floor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Springing forward, Thorndyke quickly felt the stricken man's pulse, then placed his ear over his heart. No, I don't hear anything. You know what? It might be gone. Check under the floorboards. The next moment. It's a, it's a fantastic hiding spot. Well, who's going to think to look there? That's what's so great about it. It's, it's like there's the perfect size for it, too. <laughs> I built the box to this size. I've got to put something in there. I, that's what I told the construction workers. I said, uh, I need you to put in about 150 square feet of engineered heart box. Turn on your heart box. Yep. Uh -huh. <laughs> now we're going to hear a little deal diving. So oh, we'll be right back okay. after this song. <clears throat> oh, boy. What are we doing with our lives? The next moment he looked up with a tragic face to encounter the troubled gaze of Carson. We were a minute too late, said Thorndyke slowly, brokenly. He's dead. Died of fright. Compounded by a secondary condition of very indifferent friendship. <laughs> and don't forget the complicating factor of too dumb to call the cops. Now they're just going to report on the too dumb statistics. Yeah. <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to throw off all the numbers, Rob. <laughs> the end. <laughs> Wow, what a twist, Alan. That was... That old thread twisted, Rob. That old thread twisted and shuddered and shuffled along to Buffalo. It <laughs> that was... thread's starting to shimmy. Mm-hmm. Shimmy. That's... Thread shimmy. Thread shimmy, just like people talk about all shake. the time. It's a perfect, perfect metaphor. Uh, Alan, what... Is there something we could glean from this story? Maybe oh, a absolutely, moral or a lesson? Rob. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The moral of this story is 
don't base everything on a terrible premise like a Jimmy Fallon monologue. That's a good lesson. Please send it to 30 Rock. Uh, the building. No, I get <laughs> Oh, yeah, Ad Rock's younger brother, <laughs> Thirty Rock. He's thirty. He's, he's still just you know, he's got a job and everything, but he's still figuring stuff out. What did you think the moral of the story was, Rob? I don't know about a moral per se. I guess if I could learn one thing, it's that you can't take it with you, and by it I mean gross stupidity. At least his stupid days are over. That's right. We're we're born naked, and we we die naked, and. We, it's about the stupidity we do along the way. <laughs> Wise words. Wise words. Well, I think that's going to about wrap it up for this episode. I don't think I can handle more shock and terror and horror and twists that, that you see coming a mile away. So, I mean, we're, our hour is up, Rob. I mean, there can't be any more death. It's just, that's it. <laughs> that's it. I mean, you, you pay for the hour, you get it, and then you go home. And it's a little sad because you know you got to wait again, but it's worth it. It's worth it every time. Absolutely. I hope everybody that's listening now will tune in next time for another exciting interrupted... Dear sir, I'm still waiting your reply for my latest missive. The bread grows quite stale at this late <laughs> juncture. Please, please reply at your earliest convenience. Your friend, Benjamin. <laughs> Damn!